Hey guys, welcome to Homeschool. So in this uh, part of the video, we will take up the overview of a cell. So in the previous video, we have completed the shapes and size as well as the historical background of the cell that is the discovery, cell theory and other, de other details. So here, we'll see what is an overview of a cell. What exactly is the overview? Overview is the brief details of the cell, not the complete details. So each and every part of the cell so that will be studied in complete detail verse. Anyways, here we'll just see what is a cell and what are different parts present in the cell. So, an overview. An overview of cell. So, if you observe a cell under the microscope. So, many might have observed the cells that is from the onion peels or some other parts of the plants or animal cells. So many might have observed in your school practicals or you might invite in the uh, college practicals. Okay, so so when you observe it under the microscope, so how exactly a cell looks like? Either it looks in a hexagonal shape or in an oval shape, isn't it? So <clears throat> general terms. I'm not writing exactly as the uh, plant cell or an animal cell. This is a general cell. Okay, so. Firstly, we have one outer membrane and this outer membrane is called as the plasma membrane. It is called as plasma membrane. But in case of the plants, okay, so this is uh, the outer part of the cell is called or the outermost covering of the cell is called as the plasma membrane in case of the animal cell. If it is an plant cell, then we have one extra covering only in case of the plant cell, okay, only in case of the plant cell we have one extra covering which is called as the cell wall. So, we have seen already seen in the cell theory, the cell wall is confined only to the plants, not to the animals. For the animals, outermost layer is the plasma membrane. For the plants, outermost me membrane is the cell wall. Then, first, um, the boundaries of the cell then moving on to the internal part of the cell we have one com one compact mass present at the or which is located centrally in the cell and that is called as the nucleus this is called as nucleus okay and again, like we have a boundary for the cell, there is one boundary present for the nucleus or nucleus also or the membrane of the nucleus that is called as nuclear membrane. Nuclear membrane here. Now, <clears throat> the importance of nuclear membrane is if the nuclear membrane is present in a cell, then such a cell is called as an eukaryotic cell. If the nuclear membrane is not present or if the nuclear membrane is absent, then such a cell is called as a prokaryotic cell. So, the presence of the nuclear membrane will decide whether the cell is a prokaryote or an eukaryote. Then internal to this particular new, uh, nucleus or inside the nucleus we have we have chromosomes. We have chromosomes. Fine. So these are chromosomes. On the chromosomes, okay, on the chromosomes, we have the genetic material that is the DNA. 
So here we have DNA, which is the genetic material of an organism. Okay, I repeat it once again. So this is the nucleus, which is very important part of the cell. Or otherwise, we can call it as the brain of the cell. Everything is being decided in the nucleus because the genetic material itself is present in the nucleus here. If the nuclear membrane is present in the for the nucleus, then such a cell is called as a eukaryotic cell. If the nuclear membrane is absent, such a cell is called as an prokaryotic cell. Then. Inside the nucleus, we have chromosomes and on the chromosomes, we have DNA, which is called as the genetic material of an organism. Okay, then <clears throat> in between the boundaries of the cell or the membranes of the cell and the nucleus, there is some space remaining and that space is all filled with. Okay, so this space between the nucleus and the cytoplasm and one more guys who discovered nucleus nucleus was discovered by robert brown we have seen it in the previous class so <coughs> this space is filled with the cytoplasm what is cytoplasm what is the importance of the cytoplasm so cytoplasm here is the main arena of all the cellular activities of a cell okay or all the metabolic activities all the chemical reactions will take place in the cytoplasm to keep the cell in a living state right so this is the main arena of the chemical reactions or cellular activities of the cell that is the cytoplasm you might expect you may expect a question that which uh, which among the cell is or which part of the cell is responsible of for the cell to be in a living state okay see they may give dna they may give nucleus they may give a plasma membrane or they may give some other part of the cell and they may also give cytoplasm and the question will be which among the following is responsible for the cell to be in a living state we feel that if any part is missing the cell will die but which is the part of the cell which is actually responsible for keeping the cell in a living state it is the cytoplasm definitely if any one part is missing the cell is going to die but still to keep the cell in a living state cytoplasm is required fine then <clears throat> moving on to the details of the cytoplasm so what all is present in the cytoplasm now we know that based on the presence of the nuclear membrane and absence of the nuclear membrane the cells are of two types that is prokaryotic cell and eukaryotic cell in case of the eukaryotic cells okay in case of eukaryotic cells in this particular cytoplasmic area there are certain membrane bound organelles i'll write it so i'll just i'll just uh, name i'll just draw only one organelle here so they are membrane bound organelle membrane bound organelle and which are the organelles present here in the cytoplasm of an eukaryotic organism <clears throat> they are firstly endoplasmic reticulum okay endoplasmic reticulum second one golgi complex or golgi bodies fine then lysosomes lysosome fourth one mitochondria mitochondria then chloroplast chloroplast vacuoles vacuoles and some other kind of micro bodies are also present but 
these are all absent these membrane bound organelles are absent in the prokaryotes but there is one non membrane bound organelle okay one non membrane bound non membrane bound that is the ribosome that is the ribosome and this ribosome is present both in the prokaryotes as well as eukaryotes but of course the i mean the prokaryotic ribosome is different eukaryotic ribosome is different but this organelle is present in both the types of cells whereas all these organelles they are present only in the eukaryotes not in the prokaryotes okay then <clears throat> ribosome so i mean what type of ribosome is present in prokaryote what type of ribosome is present in eukaryote so those details will we'll study when we study the ribosome in the detail fine <coughs> then the, now there is one more part or there is one more organelle which is only confined to the animal cell and that organelle is i'll write it here only centrioles centriol is one more organelle which is confined or which is present only in the animal cell and it helps in the cell division anyways each and every part which we have written here okay each and every name which can be seen here will be studied in detail so <clears throat> so now we know that prokaryote and eukaryote are the two types of the cell so in the next what we'll do is we'll first see what exactly is a prokaryotic cell what exactly is a eukaryotic or we'll see it in the difference form what is what are the, what are the differences between the prokaryote and eukaryote and then we will take the prokaryotic cell in detail with structure and then we will move on to the eukaryotic cell in detail now we'll study the difference between prokaryotes and eukaryotes prokaryote and a eukaryote so the first or uh, major difference between the prokaryote and the eukaryote is the nucleus so here in case of the prokaryote the type of the nucleus present is a primitive nucleus it is a primitive nucleus or no nuclear membrane okay we'll write it as a second point it is a primitive nucleus so here in the eukaryote it is a advanced nucleus <coughs> it is a advanced nucleus in other words we can actually write it as a true nucleus it is a true nucleus here in case of the prokaryotes it is a false nucleus it is a false nucleus this is the first difference next so what is making it as a false nucleus and a true nucleus that is no nuclear membrane <coughs> no nuclear membrane so if this is a cell okay if this is a cell so here there should be a nuclear membrane actually but since there is no nuclear membrane the genetic material that is the dna is freely suspended okay it is freely suspended in the cytoplasm of the cell whereas in case of the eukaryotes the nuclear membrane is present nuclear <coughs> membrane is present it is present then third difference here the 
membrane bound self organelles in case of prokaryotes <coughs> membrane membrane bound cell organelles membrane bound organelles are absent are absent so here they are present here they are present then one non membrane bound organelle that is the ribosome i told that it is present both in the prokaryote as well as in the eukaryote but the type of the a ribosome present in the prokaryote and eukaryote is again different isn't it so in case of the prokaryotes 70s ribosome 70s ribosome is present in the prokaryotes in case of the eukary eukaryote eukaryote 80s ribosome is present ATS ribosome is present in the eukaryote okay next <clears throat> one more important difference here is the dna which is present in the prokaryote or the genetic material which is present in the prokaryote is usually in the circular form okay dna it is in the it is in the circular form whereas in case of the eukaryote dna is in the linear form so here dna is in the circular form here dna is in the linear form next one we go to the reproduction here so in case of the prokaryote reproduction is mainly by reproduction is mainly by binary fission binary fission and then transformation transformation transduction transformation transduction whereas in case of an eukaryote the reproduction is mainly by mitosis i meiosis okay mitosis and meiosis so these are some important differences between the prokaryote and the eukaryote of course based on the nature of the cell also you can write some differences like usually like prokaryotes most of the prokaryotes are unicellular in nature they are unicellular except except some cyanobacteria some cyanobacteria are actually eukaryotes in nature so except those almost all are unicellular only but whereas in case of the eukaryotes most of the eukaryotes okay most of the eukaryotes are multicellular multicellular with few exceptions multicellular with few exceptions okay so these are the basic differences which have to be written if they ask it in the board examination or they may also ask these differences in the form of the statements in the neat examination also so it is a primitive nucleus or old nucleus or false nucleus and it, the prokaryotes doesn't have nuclear membrane they doesn't have the membrane bound organelles and the ribosome which is present in the prokaryote is 70s type of ribosome dna is in a circular form reproduction is by binary fission transformation transduction even conjugation also okay and these are usually unicellular except some cyanobacteria then moving on to the eukaryotes so these are 
having the advanced nucleus or true nucleus and they have the nuclear membrane is present membrane bound organelles are present the type of ribosome present here is the ats type of ribosome and the dna here is is present in the linear form not the circular form and the reproduction is by mitosis and meiosis and mostly they are multicellular only with few exceptions of the unicellular organisms okay so this is about the difference between prokaryote and eukaryote so <clears throat> the word pro means old okay pro means old or primitive karyote is nothing but nucleus karyon is nucleus so it is clearly stating it is a old nucleus or primitive nucleus then u is the u means new or advanced again karyot means nucleus so it is new uh, new nucleus true nucleus or advanced nucleus fine so next we will move on to the types that is the prokaryote and eukaryote in details now we'll start with the prokaryotic cell first okay so we already know what is a prokaryote it is a un usually prokaryotes are unicellular in nature isn't it and what uh, which all organisms come under the prokaryote so firstly pro prokaryotes okay so it is bacteria very very important or like um, highest part of the or highest percentage of the prokaryotes are bacteria only then it is mycoplasma mycoplasma or the wise pplo and then some blue green algae some blue green algae so they all come under the prokaryote though prokaryotes vary greatly in the shape and size but still there are four common shapes which are which are being seen the first one and especially in case of the bacteria it is the bacilli shape first one is the bacilli shape second one is cocci third one is vibrio and fourth one is spiral spiral so these are the four common shapes which are found in the bacteria so as i said out of 100 prokaryotes 98 to 99 are bacteria only now moving on to the bacilli what is the bacilli shape this is the bacilli shape this is the bacilli now again in the bacilli if it is present singly it is called as monobacilli if it is present if there are two cells are present it is called as diplobacilli and if they are present in chain like this okay then they are called as streptobacilli okay so if it is single then we call it as mono if two are there we call them as diplo similarly in case of cocci okay so if it is only one single cell then we call it as monococcus monococcus okay if they are present <coughs> in a in two then it is called as diplococcus diplococcus monococcus diplococcus and then if they are present in groups like this okay if they are present in groups then we call it as staphylo staphylococcus staphylococcus it is in the groups then if they are present in chains like this then it is called as streptococcus okay monococcus diplococcus staphylococcus and 
streptococcus so these are again forms in the cocci and how about the vibrio so vibrio is nothing but a comma shaped okay so this is actually a uh, the shape of the actually we have to study comma shape separately but still this is nothing but the comma shape okay okay so the best example for the vibrio is the bacteria which causes cholera which is the organism that causes cholera it is vibrio cholerae okay vibrio cholerae is the name of the bacteria which cause cholera fine then spiral spiral is this shape okay so the best example for the spiral is triponema triponema pallidum triponema pallidum which causes syphilis okay so the the bacteria triponema pallida is the example for spiral vibrio cholerae vibrio and there are so many for diplococcus monococcus these are all the examples for cocci okay fine then the bacilli again there are so many uh, bacillus uh, sorry uh, bacilli the best example for the bacilli is bacillus thuringiensis and the organism which causes anthrax these are all the examples for the bacilli okay so these are different or these are the most common shapes of the bacteria so now we will move on to the uh, diagram or the general parts of the bacteria uh, since the bacteria constitute the major part of the prokaryotes i am taking the bacteria as an example for the study of the prokaryotes okay so we'll draw the structure of the bacteria and then in the next class we'll go into the detailed study of it a typical bacteria has a membrane or an outer membrane first so this is the outer membrane of the bacteria so or otherwise i call it as cell envelope of the bacteria this is the cell envelope or membrane of bacteria okay so the details of the cell envelope and everything we'll study again first we'll see the structure and then we'll go into the detailed study of each and every part fine then surrounding this there is one more layer that is the cell wall this is the cell wall cell wall however is present in almost most of the bacteria but in case of mycoplasma or pplo the cell wall is absent okay then moving on to the inner part so we know that prokaryotes lack the nuclear membrane there is no nucleus present in the prokaryotes so the genetic material is freely suspended in the cytoplasm so this is all cytoplasm and somewhere near to the central position in the cytoplasm the genetic material is freely suspended so this is the dna okay genetic material is freely suspended in the cytoplasm apart from this genetic material in the bacteria there is another dna or another genetic material which is circular which is circular this is one extra genetic material which is present and this is called as plasmid this is called as plasmid we know that all the 
uh, phenotypic expressions which an organism have is mainly because of the presence of DNA, isn't it? So whatever the DNA codes, so that will be decoded into uh, or that will be decoded in the physical appearance of an organism. So similarly, the plasmid also carry some genes which also will code for, which, which will also code for the few phenotypic expressions in the bacteria and one among the and one among such uh, phenotypic expression is the antibiotic resistance okay so we know now nowadays like how exactly the and uh, like antibiotic resistance nature of the bacteria or the presence of the plasmid has been exploited so widely okay so the plasmid is very important part of the dna uh, part of the bacteria it might not be important for the bacteria but for the mankind it is very very important fine now apart from the main dna okay apart from the main dna there is one more circular dna which is called as the plasmid and this plasmid will also code for few phenotypic expressions and one among them is the antibiotic resistance fine then we know that the like membrane bound organelles are absent in the prokaryotes there are no membrane bound organelles only in the eukaryotes they are present but somehow we have ribosomes here okay one or two ribosomes are present in the prokaryotes and these ribosomes are all 70s type of ribosomes fine right? like Apart from this, there are some inclusion bodies here and there. I'll just show few inclusion bodies. So, what are the inclusion bodies and what is the importance? We'll study later. Inclusion bodies. Okay, these, these are all these are also the part of prokaryotic cell. Now one more very important part of the prokaryote is the cell envelope of the prokaryote have some infoldings like this they have some infoldings like this which are called as mesosomes very important part of the bacteria I'll uh, like I'll explain what is the function, what is the composition, and everything for the mesosomes a bit later when we are studying all the parts in details. There we'll see it. So the infoldings of the cell membrane are called as mesosomes. Few bacteria are motile and few are non-motile. So if they are non-motile, then fine. If they are motile, then back the bacteria have got a particular part called as flagella okay this is flagella again the the detailed structure of the flagella the composition the parts of the flagella so that we will see in the next video but if the bacteria is motile what is motile motile is the movement motility is the movement of an organism if it is non-motile then it is fine if it is motile then they have an appendage called as the flagella fine so these are few important parts of a prokaryotic organism so what is to be noted here is the cell envelope or the cell membrane and above that we have one more layer which is called as the cell wall and above the cell wall there is also one more layer in few bacteria which is called as the glycocalyx layer anyways the details we'll study while studying the cell envelope in detail fine then next we don't have a cell nuclear membrane the organism or the genetic material is naked here so there is no nuclear membrane it is freely suspended in the cytoplasm and then apart from this dna the main dna is always called as genomic dna so in the examination or in the question paper you may find a word called as genomic dna so if 
see like genomic dna is given then it has to be taken as the main dna so you should not be considering that genomic dna into a plasmid okay the genomic dna is always the main dna plasmid is an extra dna fine this is the extra dna which is also coding for few phenotypic expressions and one among them is the antibiotic resistance and apart from that we have ribosomes which are 70s and then few inclusion bodies and few enfoldings here and there in the cell membrane which are called as the mesosomes and then the appendage if the bacteria is motile is called as the flagella okay so this is the structure of an prokaryote so in the next class what we'll do is we'll take each and every part of this and then we'll study in detail okay guys so this is um, about the prokaryote and eukaryotic difference as well as the structure of the prokaryote i hope it is clear so in the next video we'll again meet with the details of the prokaryotes guys please subscribe the channel share the videos i like the videos as i said in the last class this chapter is very very important any any part of the chapter can be turned into a question so be careful about this chapter okay